Hello, uh, hello everyone. I'm Mariela Condorena. Uh, thank you all for finding time and visiting today's webinar. Uh, vamos a iniciar el día de hoy nuestro quinto webinar con un tema muy, muy interesante. No sin antes recordarles a todos ustedes, todos nuestros canales en nuestra comunidad English Teachers in Perú. Recuerden que tenemos nuestra página y nuestro grupo en Facebook como English Teachers in Perú. El logo es el que pueden visualizar a través de la pantalla. Tenemos también una gran comunidad en WhatsApp eh, que dirigen todos nuestros administradores. Cada grupo tiene un administrador que está siempre apoyándolos. Tenemos más de 2.500 teachers ahí. Tenemos nuestro canal de YouTube donde pueden encontrar todo el material que elaboramos, todos los webinars que hemos dado hasta la fecha. Así que no olviden suscribirse ahí. Tenemos nuestro blog en Google Site eh, que a la fecha ha sido bastante visitado también por los maestros. Bien, continuamos entonces ahora con eh, esta novedad que tenemos, que la había mencionado el día de ayer para quienes de repente eh, no estuvieron presentes. Recordarles que eh, tenemos en WhatsApp una comunidad muy grande. Hemos iniciado ya nuestro study group, eh, nuestro grupo de preparación para el examen del Ministerio de Educación, de nombramiento, contrato. Eh, estamos haciendo el desarrollo del temario eh, del Ministerio de Educación con recursos exclusivos, adecuados y elaborados por todo nuestro equipo administrativo. Eh, somos más de 20 administradores en esta comunidad. Eh, cada uno le está poniendo mucho empeño a ello, apoyando y trabajando en grupo en estos grupos de estudio, trabajando comprensión lectora. Un saludo para el equipo de comprensión lectora, de razonamiento lógico y al equipo de administradores que están dirigiendo también. Eh, la, la especialidad, ¿no? A través de las casuísticas y, y demás. Entonces, eh, en nuestra comunidad de aprendizaje en WhatsApp no solamente compartimos materiales y recursos, sino que también eh, nos unimos para poder fortalecernos unos a otros para este tipo de, de exámenes y este tipo de preparación que es completamente gratuito. Bien, continuamos entonces. Before we start, let me explain how you can talk to us during this webinar. Please type your questions in the comment section together with your name and place of living. The answers to your questions and comments will be replied by our guest speaker at the end of the webinar in the question time session. And when finishing the webinar, we will share a link for you to have access to the exit ticket which will be available for 20 minutes. Remember that, please. Next. And now it's time to know our guest speaker. Please, uh, Miss Suli, Suli, Suli Miss Suli, hello. Uh, could you introduce him, please? Sure. Thank you so much, Miss Mariela Condorena. Hello everyone and welcome to our fifth summer webinar in English Teachers in Peru Community Life. My name is Sulamita Chukten and I'm very excited to have you here once more. Let's introduce our guest speaker for today's webinar. It's a honor for me to give some information about Mr. Enrique Liñán. Mr. Liñán has taught ESOL at all levels for more than 15 years in Peru and the US. He holds a master's degree in Romance Linguistics from the University of Georgia, USA. As a teacher trainer, Enrique has presented in a number of national and international events and has worked as an ELT consultant for a number of educational institutions. Today's webinar is called Tips to Sharpen Listening Sub Skills in the Classroom. So, Mr. Liñang, welcome. The audience is all yours. All right. I guess you can see me now. 
All right, so good afternoon, everyone. And greetings from uh, the beautiful city of Trujillo, Peru. Um, it's really my pleasure to be here. Um, and let me change my name here because uh, I don't think I can do that right now. Okay. Let me see if I can. Can you guys help me change my name, please, from the admin team? Because um, I don't seem to be able to do it from my, from my end. I have it set up for my uh, job. Yes, please. Just just my my uh, first name and last name would be fine. Angela, thank you. Thank you, that's great. All right, so again, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's always a pleasure to be here. Uh, every time I get an invitation from Mariela from uh, the network, um, I always get excited. Uh, I know it's, it's definitely, you know, uh, it takes time to prepare uh, this presentation and to make sure that um, I choose the right information. I do my research. I read articles. I look for uh, books and, and, and information that's relevant to the topic. But it's always a pleasure to share uh, what one's passionate about, right? Um, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Today we're going to be sharing. We're going to be discussing. I know the interaction is going to be uh, through Facebook. So I'm going to be connected on uh, via Facebook too, to see some of your uh, real replies. Um, and then, yeah, so let's get started uh, with this presentation. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, can you please allow me to share my screen, uh, Angela, or whoever has the hosting privileges? Let's see, yes, now I can share my screen. All right, so we're gonna get started with this presentation. I put together these nice, uh, Genially presentation. Uh, you'll have access to the to the presentation at the end uh, of the session, right? So uh, the session today is called Tips to Sharpen Your Listening Sub Skills in the Classroom. It was quite a long title, so I, I just um, use this part of the of the title. Um, so today we're going to be discussing that. I'll tell you in a little bit uh, what we're going to be doing today. Uh, my name is Enrique Lignan, as uh, some of you might know me. I, I uh, had the pleasure of working with uh, some of you. Um, I have a degree in linguistics, so that's why I specialize in, and that's why every time I, I present something related to teaching and, and language, I'm always happy to do that. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be discussing language, but specifically uh, listening, right? So let's get started. So this is the overview of what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be talking about the objectives and then discuss some of the challenges for listening. Then we're gonna discuss intensive and extensive listening, some of the listening sub skills that you can see here. And we're gonna end with a summary, how you can apply this. All right, let's get started with the objectives, right? As you might've read in the um, flyer that went out this morning, uh, thanks to the ones who, uh, who responded to it. I saw some of the likes and, and the comments, uh, thanks for that. So today we're gonna compare and contrast intensive and extensive listening. I know that some of you might be familiar with this or might be experts at it, uh, but we're gonna see it from a practical point of view and we're gonna uh, look at how we can um, identify which activities can be intensive uh, or extensive listening exercises. And also we're gonna discuss how uh, this can apply to your teaching, right? And also how to respond to questions in the Carrera Pública Magisterial exams, right? Either for nombramiento or ascenso, right? Um, so the second that objective is identifying some, some listening sub skills, right? Oh, sorry for the typo there. It's LSS, right? So um, we're going to be discussing uh, what predicting content is, how we can listen for gist, listening for details and specific information. We're going to notice the difference between those two. And uh, we're going to see how we can infer attitude and infer meaning from context. And we're also going to review past Minedo exams on teaching listening, specifically those ones, right, on how we can teach listening. All right, so let's get started. Apologies for the typo with skills. All right, so first of all, I want to hear from you, right? Uh, I want to know why, um, why is listening challenging, right? I'm sure that a lot of times uh, teachers have, um, I've, I've heard a lot of colleagues and teachers say, oh my God, like uh, teaching, listening is so hard and understanding um, 
the language, spoken language is also a challenge. So can you type in, in, the, in the chat, why is listening a challenge? Why can listening be complicated for your students or even for you as language learners, right? Because we are non-native speakers of English and there are times when we listen to an audio or a conversation and, and it's hard for us to understand, right? Could you please um, type in the chat box, um, why is listening challenging or why can it be challenging uh, when we are um, trying to teach it or when we're learning English, right? I wanna see some of your answers. See? Okay. I still cannot see uh, your responses. I'm gonna wait a little bit. Okay, sometimes we understand the, we don't understand the correct words. Okay, Rosemary, thank you. Uh, it's hard, right? Sometimes you hear one word and you think it's, it's something different because of the accent and speed, right? How fast people speak, right? That's, that's for sure, that's for sure. And then dialects too, right? Which happens in Spanish too. You can hear people uh, speak and you might be like, where are they from, right? And they are, from, they, they are from a different part of the world where Spanish is spoken. It can be hard for students when they are not exposed to the language. Thank you, Percy. Uh, Edward says, it is a challenge because the accent pronunciation of words and fluency can affect getting the information easily. Um, yeah, some, st some students are intermediate, advanced, but they can understand simple listening. The speed, yes, definitely. You have mentioned uh, intonation. Yes, so it has to do with a couple of things, right? I wanna share with you some of the things that I've noted here, but I'm sure you, you can think of, of uh, other uh, reasons as you're no, you've noted already. So words once spoken cannot be repeated or listened to for a second time. That's a big challenge, right? Because when you are trying to say something um, or you're trying to understand what somebody else said and you say like, can you say it again? And sometimes they repeat it, but they don't say exactly the same thing. Right, so that's why it can be a challenge, right? Uh, it's there, you say it once. So in real life, that's the way it happens. Sometimes in the classroom, we can play the recording twice and that's okay for training purposes. But in real life, it almost never happens, right? The second one is oral communication is frequently fast. You mentioned that, right? Phonemes and also a difference between English and Spanish, right? Remember that in Spanish, we, we pronounce every single syllable, right? When you read in, in, in Spanish, when you're learning to read, we focus on syllables and we, we pronounce every single syllable. But in English, we don't, right? In English, we don't have to pronounce every single syllable. I don't read like oral communication is frequently fast. I don't do that in English, right? You need to think about content words. So that's another big difference between English and Spanish. And might be another reason why uh, listening can be challenging. Another problem is audibility, right? The quality of the recording, the background noise, right? If there are cars passing by, there's a baby crying in the back, uh, in the background. So there's, uh, there's a lot of challenges with audibility, audibility, right? Or intelligibility. There are times when you cannot understand what the person's saying because of the, um, the quality of, of the noise or the sounds that are around. Um, right, uh, and then finally, problems with colloquialisms, right? Slang, non-standard English, dialects, varieties, you also mentioned that, right? Um, so for example, let's look at this, let's watch this video. I love this video from um, this lady. Let me see if I... I'm going to share computer sound. One resident describes. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Uh, share computer sound. Yeah. So we're going to watch this video from this lady uh, who's describing um, a fire, right? She escaped from a fire. So let's listen to what she's saying. And let's see if you can listen to her and write in the chat some of the, um, some of the, um, the words that she says, okay? All right, here we go. To go give me a cold pop. And then I thought somebody was Bobby 12. Well, I, I want you to note in the chat box what you understand. Any phrases, any words that you understand that this lady's saying. If you can 
write a phrase, that's great. If you can write a word, that's great too. Please write down whatever you can uh, understand from this lady. Here we go. Thank you. You, you understood. I see, I see some, uh, some people already typing in the chat box. Thank you. So she's talking about bronchitis. Uh, she's talking about uh, barbecue. Jesus, there's a fire, right? Uh, okay. Then I ran for my life. I ran for my life. Did she said that. Uh, Lord Jesus, fire, give me somebody. Okay. So th it's very interesting because this lady, um, as you can see, her dialect, her variety of English is non-standard, right? Um, so she's not uh, using structures that are commonly used or the structures that we learn in books, right? She says, I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that or for that, right? That's what she says. So this is what we call African American vernacular English, A-A-V-E, right? Some of the characteristics of African American vernacular English are that what they do is they invert the subject with the verb, right? That there's an inversion there. You see, she's saying, ain't nobody. Another characteristic of uh, A-A-V-E is that they use the negative, the double negative, right? Ain't nobody got time for that. Um, can anyone write in the chat box, how could you say this same phrase, but in a more uh, standard way? How could you say this phrase the way you would see in a, in a book? How could you say that? Um, can anyone write in the chat box? How could you transform this sentence into something more standard, something that you would see in a book, right? She's using negative ain't, right? She's using double negative, ain't nobody. Um, she's inverting, right? The subject and the, and the verb, right? Um, so she's, she's using some varieties, uh, interesting uh, features of the language, right? Um, all right, uh, I, okay, so I think, I think some people, uh, raise my volume, please, okay, let me see if I can do that. Can you hear me? Okay, now? Okay, can you hear me, uh, Mariela or anyone in the, in the room, can you guys hear, I hear some people telling me? Yes, yeah, yes, of course. Okay, okay. oh yeah, my connection maybe. Okay, so I'm gonna try to speak louder. Um, and then, okay, yes, thank you, Teresa. Teresa just gave us the answer. Nobody has time for that. Yes, that was the answer. Or nobody got time for that, right, thank you. Um, and nobody, yeah, that's, that's what you would say, right? So that, this, is, this was just an overview um, to, to tell you that there are different varieties and different dialects. So when we're teaching listening, we need to be aware of the different varieties of English that our students are gonna be um, exposed to, okay? Um, all right, so we're gonna move on. Please let me know if you can hear me okay now, because I'm trying, I just connected my, my earphones. Maybe that's the reason why you cannot hear me now. Um, but I'm gonna try, okay. Let me see, maybe it, it's working now. Okay, please let me know. Okay, you can hear me now. Delisa says you can, she can, right. Okay, you can hear me now, awesome. Okay, so now let's move on. So we already discussed some of the challenges of listening, okay? So in order to, to deal with these challenges, we need to think about strategies, right? And as teachers, we love those strategies. So we're gonna see some of the strategies that we can use um, in order to teach listening, right? And to actually teach listening, not just test listening, right? That's another big, big question um, that uh, a lot of times I get from teachers, right? Uh, and also from students. There are times when students tell me, uh, you know, we have a listening exam or listening test, but it's just testing, right? We did not really uh, take the time to um, teach listening. So how can we teach listening? One of the, the first steps uh, of that is looking at the difference between intensive and extensive listening, right? And here you have a summary. Uh, here you are a summary of uh, the differences between intensive and extensive listening. 
I'm sure that you are aware of this. You can see, right? The, the big difference between intensive and extensive is that extensive listening is when student chooses the, um, the type of text or audio, right? That's why we say it's more student-centered, while in intensive listening, the teacher chooses that, uh, what the audio is gonna be, right? Or what the text is gonna be. Um, in, something interesting about intensive and extensive listening too is that extensive listening is what, uh, is what you do for pleasure, right? When you, for example, I'll give you an example of extensive listening. Um, I like to go for a walk or go running. And whenever I do that, I get Spotify and I listen to podcasts on different topics. Uh, usually uh, there's this podcast by uh, Brene Brown. She talks about vulnerability. And I, I, I like to listen to that. So that's extensive listening for me. I'm just listening for pleasure. I'm not going to answer any questions about that. Maybe I'll tell somebody about, about it. So I'm just focusing on meaning. I just want to hear, um, you know, I want to listen to this, this recording or this audio, and then I'm going to get that information and I'm going to use it later. But in intensive listening is mostly done in the classroom, right? When we focus on the linguistic details of it, we focus on what, um, what the text, uh, what the structure of the text is, right? Um, now, the difficulty between these two is that usually extensive listening, since the student chooses it, the materials are within their level, right? They choose something that they like. While intensive listening, you usually have new topics because with intensive listening, the teacher brings the, the text or the audio to the classroom, and then they want uh, the students to focus on particular aspects of grammar or language, right? Um, some activities that we do with intensive listening is answer comprehension questions. We focus on accuracy. While uh, for intensive list, extensive listening, we just want to get information, general information, and focus on fluency. We want to be able to listen and to understand uh, generally what we get from this audio. And finally, the amount. How, like usually extensive listening is for large amounts of authentic texts while um, intensive listening is usually short dialogues that happen in the classroom, okay? Uh, so I am reading some of, the, some of the, the comments. I wanna know from you teachers, which ones do you use, intensive or extensive listening most of the time? Which one is usually uh, easier to do in the classroom? Mm, can you tell me what, what, is, what are some of your thoughts there, right? Uh, usually intensive listening is what we do when we um, are in the classroom and we expose our students to some uh, audio materials and then we ask them to fill in the gaps, we ask them to infer meaning, we ask them to uh, look for specific information, right? So I see some teachers are telling me they're using both, Flor, for example, uh, Hilda says extensive. And you know, there's nothing wrong. Sometimes teachers read Oh, extensive is student center, so I want to do extensive. It doesn't matter. You can combine them both, right? And I'm going to show you here one uh, activity where you can combine these two. Okay, let's let's move on and let's see. I see a lot of you are, are using intensive, which is norm. It, it's totally okay, right? It's, it's only natural to use extensive listening because, sorry, intensive listening because uh, usually when we're in the classroom. Uh, teachers have to choose uh, the audio material and we have to ask our students to work on the activities, right? But um, we can see how we can combine these two, okay? We look at, look at this um, activity and we're gonna see how we can combine these two. So are you familiar with TED, uh, TED.com? Have you ever heard of TED.com or TED Talks? So TED provides an opportunity for students to use uh, or to have access to authentic materials. That's another important word, authentic, right? So if you um, look at this website, TED.com, you're going to go to TED.com. And the activity here is for you to ask your students to go to TED.com and to choose one video that they like. Of course, this is for more advanced students. If you have lower level students, you can bring maybe three or four audio uh, materials and you can ask them to listen 
um, to choose which one they want. Uh, but in this case, we're going to use TED.com. Okay, so TED.com, we're going to go to TED and we're going to find uh, this video. So the activity here to practice extensive listening is you ask your students to find the video that they like because that's the objective of, of extensive listening. The students choose the audio, right? So you ask them to find a video that they like first. That's the first step. Then how do you practice extensive listening? Look at this, this sequence here. First, you tell them, let's listen to this with no subtitles and use one color pen, black pen and write notes about what you hear. The second time you listen to the, to the audio that you chose with English subtitles, and then you write more information using a blue pen. And finally, you listen to the same audio or video now with the Spanish subtitles, and you use a red pen to write notes about what you understand. So that's a good practice of extensive listening. You ask your students to choose the audio and then you give them opportunities to listen first without subtitles, then with subtitles in English and then in, with subtitles in Spanish. So as it says here, uh, the idea, for example, of asking them to listen without subtitles is preparing them for university classroom, for example, if they want to study in the in, in the US or in a, an, an English speaking country. Um, then when you ask them to use subtitles in English, gives them support and it gives them the ability or the opportunity to look at the language and read it, right? And when you ask them to watch the video with subtitles in Spanish, you can evaluate their understanding and compare language one with language two. So you can see, you can use Spanish in your classroom as a way to foster your listening comprehension. So let's go to this website and see how we can uh, use that, all right? So here's TED, uh, here's TED.com. So look, um, you go to TED.com, right? You choose, whatever for example you can go here i can type something that says peruvian and then i'm going to find this video right i can find different videos i can choose the video that i want that's the idea of extensive listening you choose what you want then i click on the video and first i'm going to listen without subtitles remember then i listen with subtitles in english right? For example, here's subtitles in English. And then after you listen with subtitles in English, yeah, here's that. at the temple of the fisherman, Kexo, the village shaman, right? And then you can, once you finish listening to, sub, to the video with subtitles in English, you can change it to Spanish. Uh, where do we have it here? Espanol. Right, look, and then the subtitles change immediately to Spanish. All right, now let's move on to intensive listening. So your students listen to it, they get the idea, and, and then they're gonna have to continue with one activity, okay? For intensive listening. They're going to choose a section of the transcript and they're going to create an interactive gut feel exercise. So for example, we're gonna choose, we're gonna go to the transcript here. I'm going to change it to English again. I go to the transcript and I'm gonna choose one section that I like. For example, I'm Kexo gonna spends much less time in the section. ocean than the other villagers. He became a shaman after seeing a sign in the sea one morning. Like his, Kexo spends much less time in the ocean. Than okay, so I choose this part of the text I ask my students to choose one section that they like, and then they go to this website, okay, lgeorges.online.fr, and they can create a close exercise. For example, I'm gonna choose, you know, every 10 words. So what happens here is this website is going to create an interactive close exercise, okay? So I'm going to set it up, with interactive, no clues. Look, I have a text here, right? 
we can listen to this part and we can fill in the blanks. This is a, an intensive listening exercise, right? I listen to this again and I can... Kexo spends much less time in the ocean than the other villagers. He became a shaman after seeing a sign in the sea one morning, like his father and grandfather before him. This morning, he walks to the nearby sacred mountain as the sun rises. There, he gathers ceremonial cactus and herbs like horsetail, stonebreaker, and valerian, along with the mineral hematite. Back in the village, everyone All is preparing right. to leave for a religious festival at a large temple. Okay, so you see, the, the, if you want, uh, you can show the answers. Uh, but this is a nice exercise that you can do to combine um, in extensive and intensive listening. And your students can create this. Now that we're working online, each of your students can create something like this. They can create their own closed tests and they can uh, work with each other to do that, right? So uh, this is an interesting website. It's the website, the link to the website is here, so you can see it. Uh, once you get access to the presentation, you can um, access the, the website, okay? Or maybe I can put it in the chat box so then the, ad, the admin team can, can um, share it in the, in the Facebook group, okay? And this is the, the and this is the link to the um, this is the link to the TED talk. Okay, so you can you can uh, use both, and if you want to use them with your students, you can easily copy from here. So TED, and um, and then this this website to create closed exercises. Okay, so as I was saying, this is a good way to combine both extensive and intensive listening activities, right? You create the gut feel exercise, but then very important, you need to have some metacognition. And what is metacognition? Can anyone tell me in the chat? What is metacognition? And that's something that as, as, learn, as teachers, we need, to, um, we need to know about and we need to apply in the classroom. What is metacognition? How would you define um, how do you define metacognition? Yeah, the quiz is ready. You, you create the quiz and then you, uh, you can uh, show it uh, tidy. It's ready, okay? So um, yeah, you don't have to do the quiz. Don't worry about it. You don't have to do the quiz right now. Um, it, it was just an exercise. You don't have to do it right now. Don't worry. Oh yes, thank you, Fanny and Hilda. You are already answering my question about metacognition. Yes, it, it means reflecting about the task. Yes, reflecting about what you learn. Yes, asking questions about how they learn. Awesome, thank you teachers, you're amazing. Metacognition is very important. So please look at this uh, sequence. You can use TED.com to do this. You can use many other tools, uh, but the, the, the talk today is not about the tools that you can use for listening, but it's, it's about the sub skills and how you can use them. So we're going to move on, uh, metacognition, before I move on, I just wanted to let you know that metacognition is important, right? And the idea of doing that is that this helps students notice and think about their strengths and weaknesses in both comprehension and specific listening. They're going to answer some questions about how they felt with the, you know, when they listened to the, to the audio without subtitles, with subtitles in English, with subtitles in Spanish, and it's going to help them aid, uh, with comprehension and then the intensive listening activity is going to help them look at specific vocabulary. It's going to give them more independence by creating their own activities. And at the end, they're going to discuss how they want to uh, learn, right? And what they want to do with um, in the next task, right? Next time they want to do another listening activity, they can focus on um, specific information. Maybe they can focus on listening for gist you know, you are teaching them some listening sub skills with this sequence, extensive, intensive, and then metacognition, okay? All right, uh, so you can, uh, you can, you're gonna get access to this afterwards. Actually, this presentation is, is, um, is live and, and you can access it later. All right, so now for my Mineru teachers, let's move on to this one section. 
This is taken from the examen de nombramiento uh, 2019, okay? Uh, by the way, um, nombramiento, how do you say nombramiento in English? It's tenure, tenure, right? Tenure, T-E-N-U-R-E, tenure. So this is the tenure exam, right? You get tenure track, that's carrera pública magisterial, right? Tenure track. Um, so this one uh, exercise, this one question, it says here, Manuel wants his fourth graders to practice extensive listening in the classroom. He brings the audio of the following conversation. Okay, disclaimer here. I love my, my Minedu colleagues, but there is a problem here, right? What is the problem? R read the instructions again. Manuel wants his fourth graders to practice extensive listening in the classroom. He brings the audio of the following conversation. What is the problem with the instructions? Please write in the, in the chat box what the problem is with these instructions. And now I'm going to ask somebody, maybe uh, somebody from the, from the admin, maybe Angela, would you like to read this conversation with me? Can you be Daisy and I can be Carmelo? Sure. Okay. I don't, I don't like traveling by bus. Why not? The service is terrible and I hate traffic jams. Well, you can take the train. There are long queues. I can't stand them. Then ride your bike or walk. I'm lazy. <laughs> Come on, stop being negative. Yeah, you're right. I have to work on that. Thank you, Angela. You're All welcome. right. Yes, thank you. Thank you, teachers. You have the answer. Yes. So it says, Manuel brings the audio of the following conversation, right? So it's not extensive listening. The condition for it to be extensive listening is that the students chose the conversation or the audio, right? That's a condition. It's not extensive, it's intensive, right? But this is taken from the Minedo uh, Nombramiento Exam 2019, okay? So disclaimer there. Okay, so here's the question. You have this conversation. The idea is that you practice extensive listening and here's the, the question. Okay, sorry, where's the question? Here we go. This is the question. Uh, taking into account Manuel's purpose, remember Manuel wants to practice extensive listening, which of the following instructions is not appropriate to give when starting the activity? So which of these instructions uh, is not appropriate. Please, can you type your answer in the chat box? Is it A, B, or C? So if Manuel wants to practice extensive listening, then can he tell his students, listen to the conversation and try to identify which topic they are talking about? Remember that details are not important right now. Letter B says, listen to the conversation and identify the expressions used to give suggestions. Remember, they can be phrases, sentences, or comments. Listen, letter C, listen to the conversation and identify the relationship the speakers have. Remember that the speaker's attitude is important to understand what the relationship is. Okay. Okay, so I see some people cannot see it. I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, maybe in, in the next, uh, in the following exercises, I'm going to make it bigger. I think I, I uh, maybe it's too small for some people. Okay, see, yes, I know that maybe for, for people who are using their cell phone, it's too small, but I will make it bigger in the next uh, in the next question, okay? Sorry about that, teachers. Okay, so what is the answer, letter B or letter C? So let's see, if we want to practice, um, if we want to practice extensive listening, right? If that's that what the purpose is, then you cannot, so look at this which of the following instructions is not appropriate. If you wanna practice extensive listening, right? That's listening for get to, in order to get the information for pleasure. So you don't want, what do you wanna focus on? You wanna focus on what the topic is. Yes, correct. You wanna focus on the topic. Remember that the details are not important right now. So letter A is correct, right? You can do that. The answer, the question here is which is not appropriate. Letter B says, listen to the conversation and identify the expressions used to give suggestions. What are you focusing on here when you look at identifying the expressions? 
you are focusing on language, you're focusing on the form, you're focusing on modal verbs, you're focusing on you should, you could, right? Um, like, like she used here, right? She says, um, you can take the train, you ride your bike, okay? So she's using a lot of different choices. So letter B is focusing on language, not on the meaning or the understanding of the, um, of the, of the text or the conversation. And letter C says, listen to the conversation and identify the relationship the speakers have, relationship. So you're not going to uh, listen to, in order to find out um, what verb tenses they're using, but to look at the relationships. So this is also something that could be used, right? So the answer here is B, right? B, because with extensive listening, you don't focus on form. Extensive listening, you focus on meaning. But then again, this question might be confusing because it's extensive listening, but the teacher brought the audio, so maybe it's confusing. But the answer here is letter B. That's the right answer. Yes, answer is B. Is B because B is focusing on meaning. Remember that. Intensive listening focuses on, me, on, on forms, right? Intensive focuses on form, on the structures. Extensive focuses on meaning, on understanding the whole thing, meaning, okay? All, all right, B, B is the answer, okay? If you have any questions, then you can uh, let me know. But remember, the reason is this, again, intensive form, structures, extensive meaning, understanding the whole, okay? Let's move on to the next section. Okay, now we're going to go to one of the listening sub skills, predicting content. Oh yes, Sylvia is saying we have to read the instructions carefully. Yes, Sylvia, because it says which one is not appropriate. Okay, we're gonna see some of those questions in a minute. Okay, so predicting content. Uh, I'm giving you three tips for predicting content. And from now on, I'm gonna give you tips. One, two, three tips, or maybe two tips for each of the sub skills, okay? So for example, here, um, tip number one, uh, link new knowledge to memory structures. When you are predicting content, you need to link what you already know, what you, what the information that already see, exists, that's called schemata, to the new knowledge. There is a theory of psychology. There is a theory of psychology that's called schema theory. A schema or schemata in plural, in singular it's schema, plural is schemata. It's a cognitive theory based on the mental processes that connect, connecting experiences in the past with new information. That's the meaning of a schemata. That's a technical word for teachers, okay? Teachers, if you didn't know this, this term, write it down because it's a technical word that you should know, okay? Um, schemata again, is the process of connecting that old knowledge, prior knowledge to the new knowledge, right? Those structures. So it's very important when you are preparing your students to listen, in, uh, help them or give them uh, some exercises or activities or prompts so that they can predict content. So you can activate their prior knowledge and activate their schemata, okay? Schemata, that's the meaning. Tip number two. Um, make sure to set the topic or context of the text. When you start, before you play the audio, you tell your students, okay, we're going to listen to a conversation about, so you set the topic or the context, or you tell them you're going to listen to a conversation that's taking place in a supermarket, the context, the supermarket, okay? So for example, look at this picture here. Look at this picture. Here, you see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. What can you predict about this picture? If I tell you, okay, uh, before we listen, I want you to look at, the, uh, at this picture. Um, what can you predict from this picture? Type in the chat box. What can you predict from this picture? What is the listening going to be about? What do you think? If you see this picture with seven day forecast, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the weather, right? Uh, okay, right? And, and what do you think you are going to 
be listening about? What kind of words can you listen to in this part? Right? Maybe which words? Weather forecast, right? Yeah, definitely. And what words can you listen? What words come to your mind? So that's activating prior knowledge. I know that I am I'm, I'm sure that you already know how to do that, right? Uh, you teachers are are experts in doing that, activating prior knowledge or schemata. Okay. Weather vocabulary. What's the weather like? The question. Okay, the temperature will be 24. Okay, yeah. Okay, sunny, forecast, cloudy, temperature, a list of food for each day, maybe, right? How the weather will be during the week. Okay, interesting. So that's predicting new, uh, predicting content, right? And then setting the topic. And then another tip for this type um, of sub skill is to make sure that you skim through the questions first. For example, if, if you have a listening exercise or a listening exam, I know that Carrera Pública Magisterial exams or, or the nombramiento, tenure, tenure exams, they don't uh, include any listening activities, right? Which is okay. But if you ever took an international standardized test, like the IELTS or the Michigan or Cambridge FCE, there are some listening activities, right? So it's always good to look at the questions, skim through the questions, like, right look at the questions and then and see which uh type of questions they're asking because with the type of questions you can predict what type of content you will get in the audio for example if they ask a question how many people um uh, reported um having consumed alcohol during the course of the year 2019 right how many people so you know ah it's going to give me a number Right, so predicting content can help uh, do that. Okay, um, you can also you know watch or listen to a TV program or clip from YouTube, and you can pause and then predict. That's a good activity to do if you want to improve your listening skills. Uh, as you're watching something, just pause and then predict what's going to happen and think about. I like doing that when I watch Netflix. I sometimes predict what's going to happen. Um, what's gonna happen or what they're gonna say afterwards. I like doing that. All right, here's a question. Here's a question. Okay, again, from, from Minedo. This is Nombramiento 2018. You can see it here. Nombramiento 2018. Okay, so what do we have here? A fifth grade teacher wants his students to predict content, predict content in a communicative way. He is going to play the audio of an adventure trip. Before he plays the audio, which of the following strategies is more appropriate to apply to help his students predict the content of the audio? Okay, so how can we how can we predict the content in this in this situation? Please type your answer in the chat box A, B, or C. Okay, predicting content. How can the teacher promote this? listening sub skill letter a the teacher pastes three titles for the story on the board the most exciting adventure ever the scariest experience in my life and the most difficult activity i have done next he asks the students to work in pairs to select one of the titles as a guess for the listening they are about to hear so in this case they have to listen to or they have to choose the title right guess the title just guess letter b the teacher writes on the board four words related to the audio, adventure, trip, water, and rapids. I love that word, rapids, right? When you're in the river, you can see the rapids that form in the river. In pairs, the students use this, those words to discuss the possible context in which the story they are about to hear, in which the story they are about to hear will take place. Then the teacher asks the students to present their ideas to the rest of the class. And finally, the teacher sticks a picture of a person doing bungee jumping and writes two questions on, on the board. What activity is the person doing? Do you think the activity is safe or dangerous? Next, the students have one minute to think about possible answers. Finally, the teacher elicits the student's answers and writes the most common ones on the board. I see a lot of C here. I see a lot of Cs. Let's analyze letter C. Look at the question in letter C. The teacher is asking the students, picture of bungee jumping, right? Jumping. 
And the question is, what activity is the person doing? The answer is going to be bungee jumping. And then the next question is, do you think the activity is safe or dangerous? The students can say, oh, teacher, the activity is dangerous because you can die when you finish. Did you activate previous knowledge with this activity? Did this activity, this, 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 these two questions promote the activation of previous knowledge of different words, connecting new, new words to previous or prior knowledge? No, right? Thank you, Cecilia. Cecilia is saying no. The answer is not C. It's not C because C is not asking students to think about prediction. It's actually asking their students to give opinions. Do you think the activity is safe or dangerous? That's opinions. So letter C is not the answer. I see a lot of Bs. Option B, Miriam Rodriguez says option B. The teacher writes on the board four words related to the audio, adventure, trip, water, and rapids. The students will find these words in the audio. So this is a good prediction exercise. They will find the words in the audio, so they will activate their, their prior knowledge with these words, and they discuss the context in which the story they're about to hear will take place. They are already predicting based on these words. Okay, so the answer is letter B. Okay, here's the answer. Answer B. Letter A, unfortunately, you have the titles, but you can guess, but you're not going to guess. What can you base your guess on? You don't have any information to guess. You can guess whatever, uh, whichever of these three titles could be right, but you don't have any information to guess from letter A. So B is more appropriate, okay, letter B, because giving a students the words will help them connect their prior knowledge, activate their schemata. Remember schemata, prior knowledge. Okay, teachers, letter B. Okay, awesome. Next listening subskill, listening for gist. We only have four, this is the second, okay? Listening for gist, I love the word gist, right? Gist means getting the whole picture, that's gist. That's the first tip, get the whole picture. When you listen for gist, imagine when you are flying and before the, the plane is about to land, you can see the city, right? You can see that like, like get a big picture of the city, right? That's listening for gist. Think about connect gist with the, with the plane, okay? Gist, the whole picture, the general idea. G, general, G, general, okay? Listening for gist. Okay. Uh, identify content words. That's another important part of listening for gist. You need to identify content words. For example, if I tell you the words food, friends, fun, park, sunny day, sunny day, food, fun, friends, park, what can you think of? What is the gist of those words? Sunny day, park, fun, friends, food. Hmm? Camping, for example. Thank you, Cecilia. What else? What is another um, idea for that? If I tell you all these words. Okay. Camping. Picnic. Thank you, Brisa. Yes, you see, I'm already... These content words are helping you get the gist. So content words are very important. As your students, if they want to focus on gist, they have to listen for those content words to create a mental picture in their, in their heads. And finally, use mind maps. Use mind maps um, to group the words. There are different types of mind maps, teachers. You can see, you know, spider, fishbone, cluster, cycle, continuum, Venn diagram. These are different graphic organizers. You can use any type of graphic organizer that you want. Okay, um, here I'm going to give you the link to this. Okay, so you can go and check these mind maps. There are, there are a lot of different uh, graphic organizers that you can use, but I recommend using mind maps to organize these ideas when you are listening for gist, okay? You get the content words and then you ask your students to use mind maps to connect these words. 
like the, this one here, right? Um, you, can, you can use that to connect the different words and that will help your students get the whole picture, get the gist, all right? Okay, so let's go to the, to the question related to this. Which of the tasks below is appropriate to identify the gist of the news report? Uh, the question was a news report, right? Brando noticed that his fourth graders, his fourth graders need to improve their listening skills when they are exposed to real audios. For that purpose, Brando would expose them to a news report. He will use the following report. It's a long report about uh, cancer diagnosis. Um, and the process of that. So we're not going to read, we're not gonna read that because it's not necessary for now, but I want to ask you which of this is most appropriate to identify the gist? Please give me the answer, A, B or C, what do you think? Which of this is most appropriate? Which of the one, tasks below is appropriate to identify the gist of the news report? Letter A, ask the students to listen to the audio and write down as much information as they can, then ask them to get in pairs and use their notes to reconstruct the news report they just heard. Letter B, ask the students to listen to the audio and write down a phrase that gives a general idea of what the news report is about. Then ask them to compare answers with the classmate next to them. Letter C, Ask the students to listen to the audio and write down all the adjectives they can identify in it. Then ask them to work in pairs and use those adjectives to make sentences about the news report. Okay, here we go. When you're listening for gist, you are not listening for specific words. When you're listening for gist, remember the plain, general, you don't want, you don't want to look at adjectives, for example. When you ask your students to identify the gist, you never ask them to give you the list of adjectives. So letter C is not the answer, right? We know that C is not an answer. Now, some people say A, let's analyze letter A. Ask students to listen to the audio and write down as much information as they can, as much information. When you write down information, you are not listening for gist, right? You are listening for understanding, maybe, if you tell them as much information and then you tell them to reconstruct the report, then you are asking them to write or to listen for details and to listen for specific information. So letter A is asking them to reconstruct the text. Be careful with that. If you ask your students to reconstruct the text, you are not going to, you are going to need to listen for specific information or for details. So letter A is not possible. Then the answer is letter B. Yes, Ana Milagros, Gloria, Patti. Uh, my friend, Patti Ranjipo. Hey, Patti, nice to have you here. Um, answer letter B, yes. Ask students to listen to the audio and write down a phrase that gives a general idea. Remember I told you gist general, GG, okay? General idea, thank you, Magdalena, you're right. Awesome, so that's, that's the answer, letter B. Let's move on to the next sub skill, listening for details or listening for specific information. When you look at the temario, right? When you look at the, at the list of topics for uh, the exams, you see that listening for details is separate from listening for specific information. Um, so, What's the difference between listening for details and listening for specific information? Here's the difference, teachers. The difference is when you listen for details, you are thinking about sentence level. You can ask about uh, why did they decide to go to the supermarket? Oh, because they wanted to buy um, groceries for their camping trip. Details has to do with sentence level sentence level. Listening for specific information has to do with word level. When you ask a question, for example, which type of transportation did Rosario use to get to her hometown? The answer is bus, only one word, okay? That's the difference. 
if you ask questions where the answer is only one word, then you are listening for specific information. One word or two words. If you're asking a question where the answer is going to be for a group of words or phrases, then it's sentence level, then it's listening for details, okay? That's the difference between listening for details and listening for specific information. Sometimes in the Minello exams, you can find them, they are used interchangeably. And sometimes you ask and you're like, oh, I think it's the same. Details and specific information is the same. There is a small difference, okay? Think about details, sentence, specific information, words, okay? All right, so what do you need to do when you listen for details or specific information? You need to think of yourselves as the detective, right? With a magnifying glass. Look for specific information, for example, numbers, names, objects, a specific information, remember? The word, at the word level, a specific information, word level, one number, one name, one object, specific information. Ignore anything that is not relevant. Usually they're asking you a question and you need to have to ignore if that's not part of the question they're asking you. You need to narrow down, right? Narrow, make it more specific, your search and get the detail. A skim through the questions and underline important words. Before you start doing an exercise for specific information or details, you need to look at the questions and analyze the questions. If they ask how many, if they ask how all, if they ask which, when, where, you know what you're going to be listening for, okay? So these are some tips if you want to listen for details or listen for specific information, okay? Now let's look at these exercises. After listening to the audio, Daniela tells her students to answer the following questions. What did Jackie sell? Where did Richard work? During which season did both speakers use to work? Which of the following listening skills is Daniela trying to promote? Listening for gist, inferring meaning, listening for specific information. Please tell me your answer. Okay, is it A, B or C? What did Jackie sell? Maybe the answer is, what did Jackie sell? Her car. Where did Richard work? In Lima. During which season did both speakers used to work? Winter, right? The answer is letter C, okay? Again, the difference between a specific information, why is a specific information and not listening for details? Why? Look at the questions. What did Jackie sell? The answer is only one word. Where did Richard work? Only one word. During which season did both speakers used to work? Only one word. Winter. Where did they work? In a supermarket, in a, at a resort. What did Jackie sell? Seashells. I don't know. Hamburgers, right? WH question and it's one word. Yes, that's why it's a specific information. Thank you, Gloria Panta. You're saying it's only one word. Specific information is words. Thank you. Awesome. Next question. Oh, sorry. Next sub skill inferring attitude or inferring meaning. Again, Minelo uses inferring attitude, but also uses deducing meaning. Meaning is bigger, right? Meaning, the meaning of a conversation is bigger. The attitude has to do with the uh, feelings. Okay, so that's, sorry. Inferring attitude, right? Inferring means to arrive as a conclusion from facts or premises that somebody else says. You listen to what people say and you derive as a conclusion, something. So use clues to identify how the speaker feels. Sorry, sorry, the, the verb is, is right behind the, the, the tape, the cassette play, the cassette. It uses clues to identify how the speaker feels. That's inferring attitude. Analyze language and intonation. Intonation is very important for inferring attitude. 
if you want to practice this, you can play clips from drama series, for example. You can play clips from drama and you can ask your students to infer how the speakers are feeling. Are they angry? Are they happy? Let's watch this video from BBC uh, Learning. Everything in life is a negotiation. When you cross the street is a negotiation. Getting your coffee at Starbucks is a negotiation. All right, here we go. Oh, wow. Communication is about more than just the words we use. Mm. Encourage students to infer meaning based on various clues like intonation, body, body language. language, and context. For example, British people so love intonation, body language, and context. Remember that when we think about inferring meaning or inferring attitude, intonation, the way you move your body, body language, okay, and the context. Of using sarcasm. Well, that's fascinating, Dan. Yeah, just like that. So to practice this, put students in small groups and play a clip from a drama program. Then have them discuss the difference between what the characters actually said and what they really meant. What a great idea. <laughs> Thank you so much for not doing the washing up. I didn't want to eat dinner anyway. Huh. Not grateful. No. Maybe angry? Angry. angry. Annoyed. Angry. Right, so as you can see here, inferring meaning, right? Speech has a deeper meaning. Each student to recognize this by analyzing language, context, and tone, or the intonation. Play clips from drama and get students to discuss what was said and what was meant. All right, so this is a really cool video too. I can, I can put it in the chat box uh, so that you can access it later if you want to watch it uh, like the full the full um, video okay it's pretty cool and it talks about um, it talks about different listening sub skills okay so that's inferring attitude okay so let's practice that how can we practice inferring attitude look at this question after having worked on different activities using the song so Mariela this teacher not Mariela Condorena, it's another, another Mariela, another teacher named Mariela. Uh, she brings this song for her students, okay? Uh, so let's see. Please type your answer in the chat box again. Um, after having worked on different activities using the song, Mariela would like her students to develop their listening skill in fairing attitude. Taking her purpose into account, which of the following strategies is appropriate to adopt? This is another problem, okay? You don't need to write, is it appropriate? No, it's, on, it's not necessary, okay? It, the question should be, which of the following strategies is appropriate to adopt? It is not necessary because which is the subject here, okay? But that's a different explanation. I'm, I'm just telling you, it is not, it shouldn't be there. So which is the answer here, teachers? A, B, or C? A. Play the audio of the song and write the following questions on the board. How does the singer feel and how can you tell? Ask the students to work in pairs and discuss those questions. B, play the audio of the song and ask the students to write down the verbs they hear. Write down the verbs. Pair up the students and have them identify the main idea of the song using the verbs they have written down. Here, what they are doing is, um, okay, let's wait a minute. Let us see. Play the audio of the song and write the following sentence on the board. When I listened to the song, I felt I liked, I didn't like the song because as the students to complete those sentences in their notebooks. So what's the answer? I see a lot of C's. Let's analyze letter C. Play the audio of the song and write the following sentence on the board. When, when I listened, I felt I didn't like the song because, so if you're asking your students to give their own feelings, they are not inferring attitudes. They are giving their opinions, okay, teachers? So letter C is not the answer because letter C is not inferring attitude. Letter C is giving opinion, expressing opinions, okay? That's letter C. So letter C cannot be the answer. Let's let, look at letter B. Play the audio of the song and ask students to write down the verbs they hear. Write down the verbs, writing down verbs. Pair up the students and have them identify the main idea, the gist 
of the song. Remember, that's listening for gist. The main idea is gist, is not inferring attitudes. So letter B is not the answer, okay? The answer is letter A, yes. How does the singer feel? Inferring attitude has to do with the feelings. And how can you tell, okay? So the right answer, teachers, is letter A. Answer is letter A. Inferring attitude has to do with how does the singer feel. Okay, let's go to move on to the next one. We don't have much, much time for this. Let's go to the summary. Just to sum up, teachers, we're going to uh, wrap up here. Uh, this is a summary of all these, um, what we've been talking about. What do you do pre-listening, while listening, and post-listening? Pre-listening, you need to establish the type of listening. Do you wanna be, do you wanna do intensive or extensive? You need to activate prior knowledge, activate the schemata, remember, for predicting content. You activate their prior knowledge and then they can predict content, okay? While they're listening, they can infer meaning, they can infer attitude. They can listen for gist, listen for details, listen for specific information, remember, specific information, words, details, sentences. They can detect connectors or signposting. That's another word in British English, signposting. They can also take notes while they're listening. And after they listen, they need to summarize or they can summarize, they can paraphrase. They can draw conclusions and opinions. Remember, that was the activity that we saw in, uh, before, giving their opinions and reflecting, reflecting on their own learning, right? Metacognition. This is the last question from the previous exercise, Mariela. Now Mariela wants her students to improve their productive skills through a post-listening. Post-listening, so after listening. Which of the following tasks is it, you don't need to write it, is least appropriate to use? So please write your answer in the chat box, A, B, or C, least appropriate. So it means that two of these are okay and one is not appropriate, okay? So which one is not appropriate? Two are okay, one is not appropriate. So please tell me. The students are given a copy of the song with some blanks to be filled in. They get in pairs and complete the blanks. So this is an activity to complete blanks, to fill in the blanks. The students receive a copy of the song. The teacher asks them to choose their favorite verse and explain the reasons for their choice. They are explaining their verse, right? Um, they are drawing opinions, conclusions, right? Explaining their choices, paraphrasing, summarizing, right? The students create a dialogue between the singer and his lover. The student practice their dialogue for some minutes and present it to the class. Okay, the students create a dialogue. So that's, they create a dialogue as a post-listening activity, right? So what is the answer for this one? which is not appropriate as a post-listening. Letter C, uh, letter C could be because they can create a listen, uh, uh, a dialogue. They can imagine they are the singer. They need to understand, they need to summarize the information as post-listening. So C could be an appropriate. So C is not the answer. Letter B, they choose their favorite verse. They explain the reasons. They choose their verse. They summarize their verse. They explain the reasons for their choice. So summary is post listening. So B is not the answer. The answer is letter A. A is least appropriate. Why? Because filling in the gaps is an activity that you do while listening. You listen and you fill in the gaps. You don't do it post listening, right? Exactly, Jimmy. Thank you, Jimmy. A is an activity while listening, right? And the other ones are post listening. Awesome, the answer is A. Okay, this is Nombramiento 2019, by the way. Okay. Finally, this is, the info this is where I got all the information. I, I had to read some books, I had to read some uh, articles, academic papers, websites from British Council and teachingenglish.org.uk and also One Stop English. So here are all the links to the information. Okay, teachers, I'm not giving you information from my head or from what I think. I need to do some research before I, I put together this presentation for you, okay? So you can look at the, at the information here, okay? Uh, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much. My name is Enrique Lignan again. If you want to reach out to me, you can email me at enriquelinans at gmail.com. You can also um, find me on LinkedIn, 
okay? If you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, you can uh, find me on LinkedIn. I'm going to put that in the chat box right now. I'm going to paste that. If you want to connect with me, if you want to, um, let's see here, copy and here, paste. For some reason it doesn't want to copy, let me see. Okay. There we go. So please, you can put it in the in the chat box um, admin team, please. Okay. And that's it. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, if you like this presentation, I know that uh, also Mariela wants to say a little bit about this, but uh, we are launching a course with my dear friend, Cristel Loyola, uh, if you want to do that. Um, all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now we can answer some questions. Back to you, Mariela, and or the admin team. Yeah, thank you so much, dear Enrique, for this outstanding presentation. We already have a few questions. Please, uh, Pamela and Kevin, can you read the questions for Enrique Diñan, please? Yes, Miss. Teacher Kevin? Bien, vamos yes, a comenzar. Yes, Miss. Uh, yes. You can start with your questions first. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, let's see. Here we have a question that it says, could you explain the difference between a scheme and a scan, please? I would love to explain, but that's a different, it, that's a, a particular process that has to do with reading, right? So remember, uh, when we, today we focused on listening. When you think about reading, you think about uh, scheming and scanning, right? So for example, when we looked at skimming uh, has to do with like listening for gist, you get the whole idea, right? So that's the, that's the, that's listening for gist, you get the whole idea. So when you scan, you look for specific information. And when you skim, you look at the whole uh, general understanding of the text. They are similar processes, but they have different names sometimes, right? For in listening, they call it listening for gist. In reading, they call it uh, skimming, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, teacher Enrique. Thank you so much uh, for the workshop. It was amazing. I had a question for you. How can we, as teachers, practice listening? What activities would you recommend us to practice? Because, you know, sometimes first, it's really important to practice ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kevin, that's a great question. I remember when I was an English teacher, I, I don't teach English anymore, uh, unfortunately, but I remember I continued listening to different, like I use esllab.com from Randall Davis. I don't know if you're familiar with that, ESL Lab. And I would listen to the more advanced exercises to, um, to understand. I remember one day I was learning about, uh, you know, um, uh, how to give condolences to when, when somebody dies, right? And I remember listening about that. And I remember going to my mom, I, I was already teaching and I didn't know how to do that, right? And I learned about it. So uh, when you are a teacher, you need to continue learning and also taking those exercises uh, or tests, right? And then again, extensive listening, right? Netflix. I always watch Netflix with subtitles in English, only with subtitles in English. And I yeah, pause yeah. and I predict. So I always watch Netflix on my own because nobody wants to watch Netflix with me because I stop. <laughs> if I listen to a word that I don't know, I look it up on the dictionary. I try to look at a way to, to use it in a sentence, right? I listen to the pronunciation of words. I, I do, I'm doing my own processing while I'm watching Netflix. I'm not only watching it because I want to know what's happening next, but I also mm -hmm. want to learn English. Yeah. And then music, right? Music and podcasts on Spotify. Exactly. Uh, I, love, I love to listen to songs, new songs in English, and, and try to get the gist of the song, what the song mm -hmm. is about, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to tell you I always understand 100% of all the songs, but mm -hmm. I get most of it, right, with, the, with exactly. practice. Yes. Yeah, I think it's so useful. And also we can provide those kind of information to our students too, right away too. Uh -huh. I mean, they can practice by themselves too. I mean, it's a good, it's a good one. Thank you so much. Miss Pamela? Yes, teacher Kevin. Now I have a question. Uh, which apps or tools can we use for developing listening skills in remote classes with our students? Yeah, I, I already talked about um, 
I already uh, talked about uh, TED.com, but another good one, and I'm going to put it in the chat, is ESLlab.com. That's another very good one that I've used for years, and it never gets old. It's by Randall Davis. Uh, he's a teacher of English, and, and he's also a presenter. You can put it in the chat box, ESL-lab.com. Uh, uh, that's, a, that's a very good website, and it has uh, listening activities by level right from beginner to advanced thank you so much dear teacher now teacher kevin do you have any other question for him oh yeah yeah i appreciate a lot of that because that's true there are many different apps where we can practice and also our students can practice right esl video lyrics training you english there are many more but of course some of them will be at that according to our students' level. Um, what other uh, advice can you tell us, uh, dear teacher Enrique, just to practice this kind of, of uh, exercise that you already explained as you practice with us for the nominament exam or so on? What other kind of information can you tell us to, to, to check, to provide the TKT exam or there are all the different things that we can practice in? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there are books, right? There's a book that's called How to Teach Listening, and it, and it's you know developed by Longman Pearson Longman, and they they talk about how to teach all these sub skills, right? Um, there's a lot of information online. British Council has a website, and and in the presentation you'll find the links and resources. Also, British Council has uh, courses, MOOC, open massive open online courses where you can learn more about teaching listening. Um, so, and also the, the U.S. Uh, Department of State has some more uh, information for that. Uh, always Google. I always say that, like, Google, how to teach listening. Just Google it, and you'll get a lot of resources, lots of websites, uh, PDFs. On YouTube, you can type how to teach listening, and you'll get materials, videos on how to do that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate a lot of that. Ms. Pamela, do you have another question? Or oh, we can introduce to Ms. Mariela. <laughs> yes, okay. let's introduce Ms. Mariela and Ms. Catherine. They have some information, some important information for us. Please, Ms. Mariela, Ms. Cathy. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, dear Enrique, again, for sharing your time and knowledge with us. Ahora vamos a conversar un poquito, Enrique, sobre algo muy, muy importante. Eh, hemos tenido bastantes consultas en nuestra comunidad, en English Teachers in Perú, sobre, sobre este curso, sobre esta capacitación que entiende están dando con eh, Miss Cristel Oyola, sobre la carrera pública magisterial, que es fundamental for Teachers of English. Y eh, nos encantaría. Yeah, Mariela, can you hear me? ¿Me escucha? Sí, sí ¿verdad? Ya, listo. Nos encantaría, Enrique, que nos puedas explicar un poquito, por favor, un poquito más sobre qué trata el curso. Eh, vemos el tiempo para poderles dar un poquito más de detalles a todos los miembros de nuestra comunidad. Eh, Enrique, si ¿sí se me ha escuchado, porque lo veo, veo que está un poquito. Sí, creo que yo sí te escuché, Mariela, sí. Entonces, eh, la idea del curso ya lo hemos dictado hace tres años. Empezamos dictando este curso en el 2018 para preparar a maestros para los exámenes de nombramiento y ascenso, porque se darán cuenta ustedes que la temática o los temarios son los mismos, ¿verdad? Mm. Los, los, los conocimientos aplicados a la especialidad son los mismos, la misma temática. Entonces, trabajamos, por ejemplo, la idea de, de, este, de esta sesión hoy día era darles un poquito una idea de cómo trabajamos las sesiones con Cristel, ¿no? Es un curso online de cuatro meses donde se desarrollan todos los temarios eh, que se incluyen para el, los exámenes de nombramiento y ascenso en la carrera pública magisterial. Empezamos con los eh, conocimientos básicos sobre las teorías de enseñanza, ¿verdad? Como task-based learning, trabajamos este, eh, presentation practice production, trabajamos blended learning, etcétera, y luego empezamos a trabajar los skills, ¿no? Reading, listening, speaking, writing, y luego tenemos una unidad enfocada en todo lo que es assessment, 
¿verdad? Summative Assessment, Formative Assessment, Diagnostic Assessment. Eh, la idea es que les damos el material en el curso online, un curso en Canva, y luego tenemos sesiones eh, virtuales, así como estas, en grupos más pequeños, obviamente, porque lo hacemos en Zoom, entonces ya los docentes pueden hacer sus preguntas y las respondemos uno a uno, ¿no? También tenemos un foro donde respondemos las preguntas de los docentes. Yo sé que en, un, en una presentación con 800 personas es difícil responder todas las preguntas, ¿no? En un curso como este, uh -huh. tenemos este, grupos más pequeños donde podemos responder las preguntas y también analizamos las, las uh, preguntas de los exámenes. Y Cristel y yo hemos construido nuestros propios casos basados en estos exámenes, ¿no? Entonces, hemos analizado los exámenes de Minedo y construimos nuestros propios casos y les damos esos casos a los docentes para poder eh, practicar el contenido que se les da en el curso. Excelente, Enrique. Sí, definitivamente el tema de las casuísticas para todos. Y bueno, hay varios, eh, hay varios uh, teachers en la comunidad que han llevado de repente el curso en años pasados. Eh, y ya estoy leyendo los comentarios por ahí, 100% recomendado. Así que creo que han tenido una muy grata experiencia. Definitivamente un material elaborado propio por ustedes que son especialistas y muy reconocidos, pues definitivamente es fabuloso. Eh, además está de acuerdo al temario eh, muchísimas gracias por compartir la información, había muchas preguntas realmente en nuestro messenger, no podíamos responderlas todas y qué más que tenerte el día de hoy aquí, muchísimas gracias Enrique por tan excelente webinar y por haber ayudado a tantos maestros en parte de su preparación para este examen, si me permites nos acompañas eh, por favor una cosita más, Mariela, solo quería mencionar, están preguntando, el curso, el costo es 300 soles por los cuatro meses, por todo, de 4 de marzo al 3 de julio. Pago. Sí, pago único. Ya está, perfecto. Entonces, también tienen eh, la página de Fanglish, está tal cual como la ven ahí en la imagen. No, la anterior, eh, <risa> Fanglish ahí, eh, en donde de repente Enrique o Miss Cristel o Yola pueden darles algunas respuestas más si tienen alguna otra duda adicional con respecto a este curso, que es 100% recomendado, teachers. Bien, Enrique, muchísimas gracias. Continuamos. Por favor, quédate con nosotros. Solo recordarles que todos nuestros webinars eh, y todo el material que elabora la comunidad lo tienen también a disposición en nuestro YouTube. Como ya pueden visualizar, eh, ahí tienen la imagen, suscríbanse, eh, le dan a suscribirse, ahí tienen la dirección que es youtube.com slash c slash English Teachers in Perú, uh, le dan a suscribirse y eh, um, activan la campanita para que siempre tengan las actualizaciones y van a poder ver todos los webinars. Ahora sí me acompaña mi estimada Catherine Novoa y Ángela Salazar eh, para ver primero lo que están esperando, el exit ticket con Catherine y luego vamos a ir viendo las presentaciones que tenemos la próxima semana que aún continúa nuestra preparación y los excelentes webinars que les tenemos. Catherine. Buenas noches. Buenas noches, buenas noches a toda la comunidad de los English Teachers. Bien, eh, voy a leer el exit ticket, tienen que estar muy, muy, muy atentos, por favor, para no equivocarse, porque una letra marca la diferencia. Tenemos 20 minutos. Puntos, slash, slash sega slash e mayúscula t mayúscula y minúscula p mayúscula y el número 5 al final asegúrense por favor que lo estén escribiendo correctamente cuando presionamos enter y va a salir un formulario tenemos 20 minutos para poder ingresar en el escritorio y Catherine recordémosles que tenemos preguntas relacionadas al webinar de hoy día en el mismo Exit Ticket. Sabemos que han estado muy atentos y esto va a ser una prueba también para ustedes para que las puedan responder. Hay que llenar los datos correctamente, sobre todo el correo electrónico, que es donde mandamos el material que el ponente nos facilita. 
de la misma sesión. Ya todo el material de las anteriores webinars han sido enviados a todos los que han llenado su exit ticket. Si hay alguna consulta, por favor, pueden hacerlo a través del Messenger de nuestra página. Gracias, querida Catherine. Continuamos, Katy, continuamos, Ángela. Ya tenemos ahí el exit ticket, así que ya lo vayan copiando. Si lo pueden ir fijando y nos ayudan, por favor, los demás administradores para fijarlo también en los comentarios. Por ahí también ya lo están compartiendo. Bien, Angelita, ¿qué tenemos para la próxima semana? Next week. Next week, Mari, tenemos Google Jamboard for EFL Teachers Practical Uses for Remote Teaching, que esto nos toca el día sábado 26 de febrero a las 6 de la tarde, así que por favor, agéndenlo, no se olviden por favor de estar súper pendientes. Hoy no es sábado, es viernes, María, es viernes. Está ahí, <ríe> pero es el viernes, ¿verdad? Ya, y es ha sido un pequeño error de tío, nada más, pero es Friday. Recordemos que todos los viernes son viernes digitales para nosotros. Vamos a usar Google Jamboard for EFL Teachers, tal como lo acaba de indicar Angelita, y vamos a tener aquí actividades que van a poder aplicar de manera síncrona para quienes tenemos estudiantes que de repente pueden acceder al internet y asíncrona para quienes tenemos estudiantes que de repente pues tienen la conexión bastante limitada, eh, va a ser un webinar muy completo, así que es súper, súper recomendado y además con un especialista como es Mr. Juan Andrés Ramírez Calderón, que está certificado por Google. Muchas gracias, Angelita Linda. Continuamos, Catherine, que teníamos el próximo sábado. El próximo sábado, we have didactic strategies to develop A1, A2, and B1 writing skills. Este, la ponente va a ser Mrs. Cirela González, va a ser Saturday, el sábado, el sábado 26 de febrero. Todos atentos, por favor, de 6 a 7 y 45, el horario que siempre nos pertenece ¿no? a la comunidad. Así es, querida Catherine, recordemos que los sábados de especialidad seguimos continuando con temas que están muy relacionados a lo que suelen venirnos a todos los English Teachers en general de cualquier país, no solamente en Perú, muy relacionados a la metodología del inglés y en este caso vamos a abordar Writing Skills. Entonces todos quedan invitados. Muchísimas gracias a todos por su participación. Eh, recuerden, eh, recuerden estar presentes siempre desde las 6 hasta la 7.45 que estamos terminando. Hoy día se estamos terminando en punto. Hemos tenido un excelente webinar. Bien, Angelita. Ahora sí, Catherine, le damos el cierre y los aplausos son para Enrique Liñán, que nos ha acompañado el día de hoy con tan excelente webinar. Muy felices todos, muy buenos comentarios, muy felices los teachers, Enrique, por todo lo compartido. Eh, muchísimas gracias por ese desprendimiento y porque siempre aceptas la invitación que te hace la comunidad para poder compartirlo. Eh, muchísimas gracias por ese desprendimiento. Bien. Entonces, ¿Alguien tiene de repente por ahí el micro abierto? Ya está. Listo. Ahora sí ponemos las camaritas todos. Dejamos de compartir pantalla, Angelita, para podernos despedir. Querido Enrique, una vez más, muchísimas gracias por todo. Estoy redundando, lo sé, pero realmente nos sentimos para poder muy, muy agradecidos, eh, muy, muy agradecidos por tu participación el día de hoy. Las casuísticas, yo estoy leyendo por aquí a... a Cecilia Mayanga, Mariela Valle, María Elena Rixe, Diana Rivera, etcétera, que están súper agradecidos, Kimberly, de diferentes partes del, del país y de diferentes países también. Hemos tenido una gran audiencia el día de hoy, a Sandra Ticona, Nori, etcétera, a todos, a todos, teachers, muchísimas gracias, y a ti, Enrique, por todo lo dado y, y por supuesto, esperamos siempre poder contar contigo. Claro que sí. Gracias a ustedes. Bien, nos despedimos ahora todos con ustedes, Miss Ángela Salazar Barrera, Miss Catherine Novoa, Teacher Kelly Laura de la Cruz, Miss Pamela Salazar, Miss Zuli Chukten, Miss Julia Millones Espinosa, Mr. José Ortega Cerruto y todos los demás administradores que están detrás de las pantallas, pero que están ahí 
todo el tiempo a través de nuestro WhatsApp y toda la comunidad y todos los canales que tenemos apoyándolos a todos ustedes con todos estos, estos eventos que son completamente gratuitos y van a continuar. Así que tengan a todos muy buenas noches. Nos vemos la próxima semana. Bye, bye.